To show you how accounts are handled in Safeguard, you first have to have an account on an end system or an asset. So as we have always talked about before, Safeguard does not create accounts by default or does not create, a, create accounts anyhow. So the accounts you want to manage must be existing on your assets. And if you don't have them, you have to create them first by normal system administration. So that's what we're going to do here. We have a Linux system we are connected to via SSH and we now create an account on that system that we're going to include later into Safeguard to be managed. So sudo, because I'm not the, the root user, so I have to use sudo for this Ubuntu system, add user, and maybe give it a nice name, Safeguard1. Now I have to enter the password. And now I have to do some additional information. I can skip them like full name, room number, work phone, whatever you want to enter here. And now the account should be created. So let's see where it goes. And there's account that we just created. Now we have created our account. So let's start to manage it in Safeguard. So start your client, if not open already, and switch to the accounts menu create the new account by clicking on plus and the first thing now we have to select is the asset this account lives on go to browse and in our example it is ims 10 that's our linux and we just have to enter the account name here so in this case it was safeguard one so just give it a description or, or give it open and leave all the other things as default. So because we have it here for password request and we want to have session request for this account so we can demonstrate password vaulting and session access later. And then click, simply click on add account. And now the account is set up in safeguard. You notice this little exclamation mark here, this little attention sign. It says password has not been set for this account. This is because the internal database of the initial password for that account inside is empty. So to solve this, go click on here, get a right click on the mouse and go switch to account security. Go to set password, manual password and enter the password that you have chosen when creating the account on the Linux side. In our case, it was safeguard one, confirm it and click on okay. So you see safeguard has an internal database where it stores all the passwords of the account it manages and of course the accounts on the end systems will have the password as well and the reason to have this as a local database and on the systems is that you can now compare all these account passwords to see if the account password was changed out of sync we're going to discuss this later when we talk about uh, partitions and profiles what you can do now is you can now go here and say account security and check password and see if this matches we go password are in sync everything's fine now we're gonna include an account on an application that has its own accounts inside to be managed with safeguard for this example we're gonna use a Microsoft SQL server and the asset for this we have created earlier so in our database server there is a user account already defined it is called svc underscore one im underscore sql as usual safeguard does not create accounts so we rely that the account on the end system on the asset has already been created somehow by somebody else not by safeguard so the approach is pretty much the same as on the hardware or an operating system asset. Just go to your Windows client or to your browser, whatever you have. And you see we have already created the asset. So now go to accounts and create the account inside Safeguard. Go to browse, go to the SQL server as the asset. And now it is 1am underscore SQL database account. We just leave it here for password request only because at the current moment we don't support session management for that account and here we go same as with the linux account before check the, set the password in the internal database and check the password here we go same approach same success Oh! 
Hey, Safeguard experts, you're good with all of these terms? Assets, directories, users, accounts, you're aware of them? Brilliant. Here are some terms more. The next one, it's the entitlement. An entitlement is something that helps us to take all the objects we have created before and glue them together with something we call the access request policy. That means an entitlement itself can have properties like priorities and time restrictions. We can as well assign users to them. And we can, on the other hand side, assign access request policies to them. Access request policies itself can have access types. That means the type of access we will configure. Access durations. That means how long it will take. Access configuration or session configuration, depending on what we want to do. Could be both. Time restrictions again, if it's not defined on the entitlement. And last but not least, we can assign a workflow to these access request policies. And the workflow itself defines the requester and what the requester can do, the approver and what the approver can do, if necessary, as well an emergency handling to bypass the approvers. Not really a good idea from my perspective. And a reviewer that could be used later on to review a session access, for example. All of them gets explained in detail in the next video and please Holger Weyer show us the technical bits.